welcome to Bike Shows UK, the show that brings you all the action from the hottest bike shows from all over Britain. I'm Steve Barry, and this week I'm at the East of England showground near Peterborough for the biggest outdoor biking event you'll find anywhere in Europe. Yes, it could only be, couldn't it? The BMF Show. The BMF has become a firm fixture in the biking calendar for the tens of thousands of bikers who make the annual pilgrimage over to East Anglia. And last year's event attracted 90,000 visitors, and this year's is set to be even bigger. This is quite simply the biggest show of its kind anywhere if you want to buy a bike, bike clothing, or anything whatsoever to do with motorcycles with over 900 trade stands. But what is it? that makes the BMF show so very popular. Well, let's ask one of the organisers, shall we? Jeff, everyone knows the BMF show. How long has it been in existence for? Years and years. Started first one in 1960, but we've actually been 27 years at Peterborough, so that's long enough, isn't it? Blimey. <laughs> yeah, long time. And, and it's, it's an enormous, vast, huge event. What do you think explains its popularity? I only wish I knew, really, Steve. You've been many years before. Thousands of people do every year. It's like a hardy annual. Tens people. of thousands of people come. <laughs> but they just keep coming year after year. I think it's this sort of concentrated mass of everything biking all in one place. There's no racing to detract people, if you like. It's just bikes, bikes and bikes, loads yeah. of accessories. And let's not fool ourselves, some bargains here as well. You know, the big manufacturers clear out a lot of their old stock here. So people come shopping. Now, year on year, it seems to get bigger and bigger. How many people are you actually expecting this year? Well, we were hoping, uh, luckily the weather's not too bad today, but actually aiming for 90,000 people. It was 88,000 last year. We wow. always increase it, so 90,000 people over two days. That's a lot. The BMF is a bit like an outdoor version of the NEC bike show. And all the big names are here with a full range of models so that you can do the bike show shuffle. You don't know what the bike show shuffle is? I'll show you. You get on the bike like this, you pull the clutch a couple of times, then you give the old front brake a bit of a squeeze, and then, and everyone does this, you do this. Uh, it's called the bike show shuffle. Uh, Triumph and one of the big bike mags were offering a lucky punter the chance to ride away on a brand spanking new Daytona 600. But the BMF show is not just about road bikes, sports bikes, touring bikes, although there's an awful lot of them about, some with trailers on. It's also about off-road biking and in fact there's a chance for you to have a go yourself. Rob, what's the purpose of what you're doing here with KTM? Well, it's the BMF rally and what a show. What, what? You have to call it the BMF show, Rob. The show, indeed. Or else they get very upset. Show, shows, <laughs> shows or rallies, it's an ideal opportunity for uh, KTM to be here with our new range of bikes. Of course, thousands and thousands of motorcyclists uh, get the chance to, if you like, try before you buy. Well, exactly, because you're not just here with your bikes. Lots of people are here with their bikes. You're here with bikes that people can actually get on and ride around this impromptu uh, supermoto circuit. So many people coming off their multi-cylinder sports bikes nowadays onto the KTM bikes. You can do laps of supermoto, you can do laps on the road bikes, the Dukes there, and with sort of 60% tarmac and 30%, 40% of grass, you get a good measure in, what, 25 seconds of what the KTMs are capable of, even in this weather. What about the, the interest in supermoto in general? You, Super bikes, it's gone off the boil a little yeah, bit, super yeah. motors. Do you think it's just novelty? Do you think people just want to see something fresh? Yes, it's a mixture of that and it's something that's exciting as well. The UK is about six years behind Europe. Supermoto really was born over in Europe. 
it's come to the UK and in this recent years it's a chance like I've said the guys and girls on the super bikes with the multi cylinders there's high insurance costs problems with speeding expensive bikes to run tires fuel it goes on but you can ride a single cylinder super moto bike and get the thrill the same kind of thrills as you might get on a super bike but you're safer it's speed thrills but not as many spills at less speed but you still get that adrenaline rush so matt we saw you having a razz round on the old ktm there is it yeah. your first uh, experience of super moto first experience of super moto yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's um it's quite an experience i think you they're easy to ride you can have fun on them they're quite forgiving um and they're quite smooth, particularly the KTM, very smooth, four-stroke engines, very nice. Matt, you've been there. There's, oh, no, no, there's no beating about the bush. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make you a bad person. No. I've been it every single time I get on one of these things. But it's not too bad, is it? Because the whole point is you're not really going that fast. No, 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 no. So you fall off, you brush yourself down, and you get back on again. Now, what they're trying to say is they're trying to say that people will trade in their multi-cylinder road bikes for these. Yeah. Now, looking at you, that's presumably what you've come from. Do you yeah. think you would? I would, would it be I a second bike? What do you think? No, I think you can ride one of these. They're, they're more user-friendly. They're more road-friendly, I think. You're, they're more sit-up and beg. Yeah. And the engine's definitely easier to control than on a, a fared Japanese race bike. That, I think that's very true, especially if you're using it to go to work. You live in yeah. a big town or a city. The, quite slim profile, bars are high, usually yeah. over the height of car mirrors, and they're good for commuting on. Yeah. But they're abs let's not beat about the bush, let's be honest, they're absolutely crap at distance. Yeah. If you've got to go rubbish. more than about 50 miles, they're rubbish. Yeah, yeah. So would it not be the bike for you, or do you, do you still fancy one? I'd still go for one. Any commuting I do is very short distance, right, and I think yeah. I'd go through the country lanes and it would be fun. Yeah, it's horses for way. courses, really, yeah. isn't it? So the days of the big multi-cylinder superbike might be over, we think. Possibly. Could be. Yeah. But maybe not. <laughs> but it's not just the manufacturers who bring their bikes to the BMF show. There are plenty of private punters who ride along on their pride and joy, hoping to go away with a coveted Best in Show award. There are all sorts of different classes vintage, performance, street fighters, even trikes. Right, well, it's the last thing on Saturday. I think we're the only two people actually left here, Jeff, apart I'm, from these I'm, lot, of course. I'm not flagging. <laughs> Tomorrow, though, you're helping to judge the best in show award, and yes. uh, what are you looking for there? An easy life, really. <laughs> no, it's going to be a, a big thing to do. We've got seven judges all together, so we've got to sort of split this up, and we've got all these different categories, seven categories going from vintage to street fighters, yeah. and there's already some tasty stuff over there, you know, oh, yeah. that I've already had a little sneak preview, as it were. And so depending on what you're looking at, depending on just how you do slant it, so the vintage stuff, you're really looking for originality. How close was it to the original spec? Can't quite go back to 1948 or some of them, but nevertheless, that's what we're looking for. And then on the street fighters, you're looking for sort of how horny they're looking, you know, and how sharp and shiny and all the rest of yeah. it. So it's got all these little slats, general engineering, the paint finish, you know, the, the sort of stuff. So lots of little categories, and you've got to be so careful because I know you've seen them before, they're so good. <laughs> they think, are, aren't they? That's the problem. Think, oh my God, and it's almost, shall I stick a pin in it, you know, and just go for it. But um, so it's, uh, it's going to take some time. It'll yeah. be stressful. Well, Jeff, when it comes down to it, how can you possibly decide which one's the best in show? Because you've got, you've got bikes that are 70 years old, and then you've got a street fighter that's been made out of a, a brand new bike. Yeah. It is difficult. I think that's one of the good things when you've got seven judges, at least you've got different opinions there. So I can have my view and I'll go around and select them. And then overall, we've got to get a best in show out of all those bikes over all eras and whatnot. And so it's a, it's a bit of a balancing act. But we hope just with all enthusiastic bikers that are, are involved in the judging bit, one will sort of naturally come to the top. Might yeah. be only by a short head, but it's going yeah. to come there. So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. I only hope we don't upset too many owners. <laughs> The competition is judged throughout the weekend and we'll announce the winners later in the programme. Right, well that's it for part one, but don't go anywhere because we'll be right back in just a moment with all the action here at the BMF show in Peterborough. Hi, and welcome back to part two of Bike Shows UK, which this time comes from the big one. Yes, the BMF show here at the East of England showground, which is near Peterborough. And Peterborough, of course, is famous for a few things. It's the home of Britain's very wonderful motorcycle press, and it's also home 
to the posh Peterborough Football Club and their madcap manager, Barry Fry. But did you know, it's also the spiritual home of Speedway. And coming right up now, a demonstration of vintage Speedway. Tell us about this remarkable looking machine you've got here. Well, it's a 1928 Rudge. Blimey. Um, four valves, which is something they all rave about today. It's weird that, isn't it? People put 16 valve on the back of cars and <laughs> That's Rudge right. didn't triumph have five valve heads at around this time. No, um, there are one or two of those about now. Uh, Valentine, he built one. Um, Honda's right, have built one as well. But, but Rudge, a, them but Rudge had them in 1928. No, even earlier than that, I think it was about 1926, they had four valve Rudges. Yeah. But this one was the first of the sort of purpose-built speedway bikes. So it's quite an exotic creature in its time. Yeah, yeah. Well, you say that, it, it was normal for Rudges because all, yeah. the, all the four, the road bikes, um, yeah. they all had four valve engines in. Yeah. Do you guys actually race or is it mainly parade stuff that you do? It's supposed to be a demonstration. <laughs> It never is, though, is it? But, you know... <laughs> Once the flag goes down, that's it, isn't don't it? Don't get in anyone's way, because they go over no. the top. So no plans to pack it in yet, Tom? Not yet, no. Great. <laughs> Glad to hear it, mate. I'm about to meet a remarkable man, a motorcyclist who five years ago was struck blind. Luckily for him, he was able to rely on St Dunstan's because he was in the Royal Artillery. Now, St Dunstan's are an organisation, a charity, who support ex-service men and women and help them to live independent lives in the community, despite the fact that they're blind. And most importantly for him, it got him back on a bike. Billy, tell us a bit about your background. Certainly, Steve. Uh, I, um, I joined the army at 15 and a half years old as a junior soldier. I served just short of 21 years with the Royal Horse Artillery. Uh, with a regiment called the 1st Regiment Royal Horse Artillery. Um, I've spent a lot of time in, in Germany, uh, stationed in England. Uh, it was whilst I was on an operational tour in Bosnia in 1997 uh, that I contracted a very, very rare eye condition, uh, possibly from muck on the floor or whatever, uh, and I, uh, my optic nerves are totally and utterly uh, shredded. So, so I'm now I'm totally blind. Yeah, but most people would imagine you're riding at like walking pace with somebody behind you, sort of hold of a key on a on a string or something like that. It's not like that at all, is it? Absolutely not, Steve. On, on a show with the Flying Gunners, I ride one of the KLX 300s. Um, that's at a slow speed, obviously, because I'm in a grandstand. But what I do on the sports bikes on an airfield is exactly the same as Joe Boggs does on the road. Yeah. I'm nailing that bike at high speed. And this is this is the bike, isn't it? Yeah, this, this the, is the Kawasaki ZX. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Right. So there's some kind of record, isn't there, that you're going to go for? What's that? Tell us about that. Well, well Steve, I'm hoping to break the... Uh, the first record I'm trying to break um, is the solo blind motorcycle land speed record. Is there such a record? Yes, there is, Steve. Right. Uh, that record stands at 78.4 miles, miles an hour. There also is another land speed record for a blind solo driver in a car. I believe that record is 147 miles an hour. Steve, this motorcycle will do close on 190 miles an hour safely. I'm hoping to take this bike at over 150 miles an hour uh, and, and get two records. What do you get from doing it? You know, really, what, what do you get out of it? Like any other biker out there, Steve, you know yourself, the sense of freedom. I'm not stumbling about with this white cane. I'm on that bike and I'm part of a motorcycle. And the feeling I get just being freedom, uh, the feeling of freedom on that bike is absolutely second to none. It, it's the, mo the most amazing tonic anybody could want. And if you thought Bill Baxter was mad, and of course he is, then you haven't seen Moped Mayhem. The team, 70 or so, raced around a bit of a shale oval for 45 minutes a couple of times on the Saturday, and on the Sunday, would you believe, a one and a half hour moped race. This is the fine machine of Team FSB, which stands for Fat, Short and Bald. But I think Fat's missing today, isn't he, guys? Where's he gone? Having breakfast? Uh, you couldn't keep up with it. You couldn't keep up with the pace. So, what was it like yesterday? It looked, to me, completely crackers. 
Yeah, it's 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 pretty mad. It's um pretty much a punch up around a around a speedway track. Well, that chicane just seemed to be designed so that people would collide with each other. <laughs> <laughs> to say, would that, that be is a the idea. idea? That is the idea. Now tell us about your fine machine, because to me this is a machine completely in the spirit of moped racing. It, it obviously del delivered a librarian to her place of work in a previous life, or maybe delivered pizzas. What is it? It's a Honda Camino. Yeah. <laughs> so it's got a, a KX100 tank on it. There was a step through, but there's a bar welded across it because we found that the uh, the frame flex is about 50 miles an hour. So. Right, well, best of luck, boys, in the race. The waiting is over. It's time to head over to the arena for the sights, the unmistakable sound, and the sickly sweet smell of moping. Racing mopeds looks madder than Mad Sunday at the TT. Moped mayhem has become a BMF show tradition. Nearly a hundred teams gather for this bizarre endurance event. Some of them buy a moped out of the local paper for 10 quid, fill the fuel tank and turn up ready to race. Others spend hundreds, perhaps even thousands of pounds on their machine, which I think goes against the spirit of the event. However, just like all kinds of racing, it started out as fun. Some people start to take it far too seriously. The thing about bike shows is that after wandering around for a while, you feel like getting back on your bike, getting out and exploring the local area. So that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. The stereotypical image of the average BMF, the British Motorcyclist Federation member, is of someone in all black leathers, perhaps with a bit of a beard and a reflective Sam Brown belt, on a touring bike, a Goldwing or a Pan-European, or perhaps even a BMW and that's what I'd chosen for this weekend, a BMW RT and on the long journey down from the northwest, a good few hundred miles, I was grateful for the screen, the heated handlebar grips and the capacious panniers. However, when I decided to do a bit of sightseeing on these Fenland roads, I wondered if this big heavy touring bike would be any fun at all. It's not the fastest bike I've ever ridden. Remember, this flat twin arrangement is over 80 years old now, but it was fast enough. And the roads around here aren't the best for biking. It reminds me a bit of the filed coast around Ormskirk and Southport in my own part of the world, does the Peterborough area. The roads are long, flat and bumpy. The area is given over to market gardening. So instead of hedgerows and trees, it's wide open fields bordered by ditches, so watch yourself. So it's not the best kind of country for scratching about, and the BMW may not have been the best bike to do it, although I did find those funky servo-assisted brakes remarkably capable when I got used to them. There are lots of lovely places, beautiful English towns around here, like Melton Mowbray, Bourne and Stamford, old English towns, and nice scenery too. So maybe it was time I got a bit more like the BMW, started to chill out a bit, sit back and enjoy the scenery. Well, that's enough about English architecture, touring bikes and bumpy Fenland roads. Back to the show. Many of the stunt shows that you see at a bike event like the BMF show consist of a rider on a high-powered sports bike doing wheelies, stoppies and then popping the huge back tyre. The over-the-top stunt team are inspired by another era. As well as bike shows, they play a lot of county fairs and agricultural shows and their act is more traditional. They use motocross bikes and jump ramp to ramp, they use quad bikes and they use trikes which I hadn't seen for a long, long time. The highlight of the show is when they drag 20 members of the audience out into the arena and they jump them. The over-the-top stunt team, a bit more white helmets than Gary Rothwell. It seems that the entrants for the best in show competition were a temperamental lot, because as soon as the judging results had been announced, those that hadn't won anything left. Fortunately, that left those that had won, including the block that had won the custom section. Oh, and tell us about this bike. Well, it's um, 
it was a hobby, uh, well not so much a hobby, but a desire to build a one-off low rider bike for many, many yeah. years. And all of a sudden I thought, well, take the plunge and have a go really, and this is the result. Yeah. What's it, what's it, it's not based on anything really, is it? Because presumably the frames are one-off and, uh, yeah. and stuff like that, but the engine started life in a Kawasaki. It was a Kawasaki Z650B1 originally. It's um, very clean. It's had a lot of work gone into restoring it, mm. the engine as well as everything else, because it, yeah. it looked like it had been at the bottom of the sea for 10 years when I found it. And now, here's the winner of Best in Show, Martin, and his RD400, but this is no ordinary RD, is it? No, I mean, it's one of the first new bikes I ever had was an RD400 when they first came out. So you went through like, moped, then what? 125, yeah, no, RD125? I, I was allowed a 250 nah, then. 250 yeah. in them days, you the RD250. <laughs> Then, uh, then it was the 400. Then yeah. I had that. Then slowly progressed to uh, XS11. Um, That's a bit of a, it's a bit of a change, like isn't it? Yeah, but <laughs> it was all you got to have the biggest bike at the time, wasn't it? So These I just were quick going. though, weren't they? Oh, People, yeah, yeah. Oh. Right, well, uh, well done, mate. There you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'd seen an awful lot of things at the BMF show, but there's no way. I'd seen the whole show, but then again, it is the biggest event of its kind anywhere in Europe. If you want to see it all, you'll have to do what I'm going to, and go back again next year. Well, that's all from Peterborough and the BMF show. Looks like uh, I'm the last one here, so before they ask me to tidy up, you won't want to do that, I'm going to get going back on my BMW to Berry, and I'll see you lot next time.